It isn't hard to carry gamer subs at all. I mean, with 60 servings in a tub that size, it's simple. So navigate their website and make an electronic order using my code THORIN, T-H-O-R-I-N, which acts like a blade to slash 10% off your order. So you can save a bit, and Lord knows someone needs to. If Mario had to describe this drink, he'd call it a perfecto. Now, simple, hard carrying. We're talking about those games where his teammates are all like zero, differential, or minus, and then he's just like plus 29, plus 45, plus 15 on a map, plus 15 on the decider, and they lose or they don't win the tournament. These kinds of hard carry performances are very, very famous in Simple's career. I would say he is the most obvious example, illustration of the hard carry in Counter-Strike. Like, if you had an encyclopedia or a dictionary with this terminology hard carry you'd just have a picture of simple next to it wouldn't you so if you think about the time span we're talking about it's like 2015 because in 2014 he was a younger player he was in L Razors there were some more right players there he hadn't blossomed yet 2015 when he's in flip side then later going and obviously then event he's in Team Liquid in 2016 then into Na'Vi but then they have the problems in Na'Vi it takes him a few years to really get him a proper second star to get the team set up so we're talking like 2015 through to spring 2018 when Electronic properly got active in Na'Vi. Simple was the best and the biggest hard carry in CS history, especially in terms of consistency and frequency of hard carrying. It was pretty much routine. Event after event after event, he would have monster stats, big performances, big performances in losses, big performances against the best teams in the world. Now, as he improved as a player year on year on year in that time span, the carries just got more and more ridiculous, even when his situation in his team sometimes didn't improve, which he just got better and better and better and better. And even as a result, in 2018, famously, that's why he won the most MVPs or a bazillion MVPs. Even though Device was winning all the tournaments and when he would win the tournament, we're often get the MVP. Like, the point was, Simple was in a position where he could contest someone who's winning all the events and in the best team. That was impossible in CS history before. So to me, the lack of star help he had was why these carries were so exceptional, in my opinion. Because let's think about the teams he had. In Hellraisers, he was a younger player, hadn't quite blossomed yet, he was very young, he was like 16, 17 years old. Dorsey was semi-washed in that team, by the way. Like, he wasn't a, the, the great player he'd been in 2013 and most of 2014. When he got to a flip side, World Edit was never like a guardian. He was never that good. He was just an all right AWPer. Quite frankly, at tier one, often struggled. Elish was way too young when they were in Team Liquid together. When Simple got to Na'Vi, there was a guardian got in a huff and he's got his back up and just started playing worse and worse and worse and then demanding he had the AWP all the time. And you saw that team never really worked. Electronic only came online in like spring of 2018 and even then by the way had a whole bunch of tournaments where like you know for his career electronics like a 1.1 x player and he would have a whole load of tournaments even during simple's prime when it was like 1.1 x was the tournament yeah he'd have the odd pop off a 1.2 1.3 those are the big ones but i think people even overrated electronic quite frankly they would go he's easily top five in the world sometimes when he would have like a, a rating anywhere near simples they'd go i think he's actually basically as good as simple like there's a one two that basically like clearly the best and people were so horny to give electronic the mvp anytime he came close to it just to take it away from simple quite frankly but you think of the people that the rivals of Simple, who were the superstars at the time, had. So Cold Zero had Fur and Fallen. Now, I didn't put Fallen that high in 2016 as HLTV did, and I definitely didn't in 2017, but everyone else had them as like top five, top ten players. So there you go, Cold Zero had two top ten players by your estimations. Nico, when he first came to Faze, had Rain, who was a monster even then, obviously was even when Guardian came, but he also had Allo, who had contributions, and then later he had Guardian, who was back to prime form, and he had Rain fragging out in the first few months. Device obviously had Dupree, who was another top 20 player every year. He had Cajun B back in his prime in 2015, a little bit of time in 2016. He had Magus, obviously, when you go into 2018 and 2019. Like, these guys had help. These guys had other stars. These guys had other really amazing players. Simple just had Electronic at a certain point in time and had sort of checked out mentally Guardian or washed great player like Dorsier. So you think about how much more he had to hard carry. So let's look at some of these hard carries and really see how absolutely ridiculous they were. So here's Simple over his whole career. We're on LAN. So we'll go, right? Let's go. Not going to go 2018 because that's when everyone knows he gets super, super sick. Oh, let's just start in 2015, shall we? Let's just have a look at some of these matches. So look, he's playing on flip side. Obviously, these are against lesser opponents, right? Plays against Hellraisers, in theory, a better team, right? A better team from the same region. Oh, he's just, just going plus 10, 
for the series there against super veterans. Plays him again, goes plus 18. It's on the same day, by the way. He's playing him twice. You go pay, he plays Narvi when he's in flip side. Oh, look, he's had a bad series, hasn't he? Do you know how much better Narvi was? This is 2015, guys. This is where Narvi, in the middle of 2015, this is when, like, that summer they went and won that tournament. What was it? I think it was ESWC, right? They were, like, a top five, top four team in the world, Narvi, at that point in time. You go up, plays against NIP when they were still pretty decent. Goes, let's see, that's 18 minus 9. So it's 9 plus 9 for the series over a full three-map series. Goes against Na'Vi. Not that good on that one again. This is just 2015, remember? It's not even before he, when he's being Team Liquid yet. Then we'll go to 2016. You go to 2016. It's all on land. Plays against Hellraiser again. Okay, that's the one on land where they qualified, where he got carried and he cried. That's why he cried, remember? Then at the major, he goes plus 1. In a major semi-final, as like a 17-year-old kid in a team where they don't speak Russian. Already ridiculous stuff. Then you go over to here, where he plays on worst players at that Star Series. Worst players, by the way. You couldn't even name three of the other players in this lineup. He's going against Virtus Pro in 2016. One of the best teams of all time. Still very much a very strong team, even though they had like a mini land slump at this point in time. Oh, what's that? He's just going to end up plus four for a best of three series with a bunch of bombs against one of the best teams in the whole world on LAN. Okay. Same tournament, he goes against SK. You remember the Danish guys? Look at this fucking stats, boys. He's only plus 37. Then he goes against Godsent. This is the good Godsent, guys. This is around the time of Malmo, where they were like semi-finals and could maybe have won that event when Twists was popping off and they were looking good. Oh, what's that? He's just going 29. What's that? No, it's 20, the 30th. That's, oh, that's plus 20. What am I talking about? It's plus 20 for the series. Goes against G2 with Shocks and all them. This is back with Liquid when he goes to ECS, right? Obviously, he doesn't do well there because it's when he stands in. Then we keep going up here. Plays against Na'Vi at the Major, remember? By the way, at the Major, just carries against Nico's Mouse Sports. Carries against Na'Vi with Guardian. What, by the way, top 2-3 team in the world. Then he plays Fnatic, top 2-3 team in the world. He goes plus 15 against them on fucking LAN in a Major. Yeah, he does badly in the final. He's playing against a much, much better team, by the way, with more help, like I told you. That's Cold Zero, Fur and Fallen against 2016 Simple, plus like Mini Elige. And who else is good? Like, Nitro's sort of not bad at this time. They don't have, like, a true IGL. Like, are you kidding me? You keep going up here. When he gets to Na'Vi, he just mercs Liquid when he plays at that ES on York. He goes really harm even against Virtus Pro in the final. This is when Guardian's still, like, somewhat sus. Then you keep going. This is when they have the hard times with Guardian. He's doing, like, a plus 14 against Dig at the epicenter that they won. They won that tournament, remember? Then you go through 2017. We haven't even got to his prime of 2018 yet, guys. You go back, he's going against Astralis. This is the team that won the major. This was at the major in the quarterfinals. And what's that? He's a zero against the team that wins the major over three, four maps. That's not even bad. Then you keep going through. Forget this one. No one cares about this Fnatic. It's when they've done the rebuilt Fnatic. Go against Virtus Pro. This is when Virtus Pro is starting to fall down a little bit. Big boy performance here, in it. Keep going up. Cloud9. This is when they were actually decent in the summer, if you remember. Not that great a performance there. You keep going up. Now he gets back on track against NIP. Go up Cloud9 again. This is still a solid team. Plus 11 over that series. Let's see, ninth. So that would be like E-League Premier or something like that. Something in that sort of wheelhouse. This is obviously playing for Ukraine. It goes up here. No one really cared about Heroic. Mouse Sports was good at the end of the year, if you remember. Goes plus 21. That was the Dream Act Winter Final. Then finally, we come to 2018, right? Well, remember, even in 2018, Electronic, I'll show you over here. Electronic, by the way, over his, in 2018, the year everyone's got top five easily. He's a 1.19 player, by the way. Y'all are talking like he's like a 1.25 or something. No, 1.19. Nothing crazy. Good, but nothing crazy. Then you look at over that year... And over that year, he's pedestrian as fuck for the first while. This is where he plays for Russia, by the way. Forget that. Then he starts coming online big time here. Yeah, he'll come online, but he'll have like a big couple of tournaments. Then he'll have some like good tournaments. Yeah, some good ones. Just some good ones. Just some good ones. Really big one. Just oh, an average one. Just some good ones. Really big one. Ah, oh, bad tournament, actually. Uh, average one and a bad one. That's like the year when Simple was considered. It, that's his goat year. Then we go to 2019 when Simple's even switching halfway through with York. Look, these are pedestrian as fuck. Pedestrian, pedestrian. Big, big performance. Big time pedestrian big time by the way that's just like um the european group of epl there not even a full tournament then another whatever another whatever whoa what a monster performance at the major then he goes right downhill you see what i mean like actually electronic by the way is slightly overrated if you look at some of these so you look at these performances the point is 
when Simple would have these hard carry performances or his team would be worse and they'd like lose the game in a narrow fashion and he would have like still positive stats or he'd have like a map where he popped off, people would always say, well, it's easier for him than actually Cole Deer and them to put up numbers. Like he can just play selfishly and play for himself and frag out and he's just baiting them all. Similar arguments you'll notice used against Blame F now on Astralis when he's pretty much one of the only good things about Astralis along with the return device, admittedly. And people talk like he's the reason they're losing the games. He's the only reason they're in these games, you idiots. You have no eye test or something. And the notion was that Cold Zero, etc., were better players, and that Simple was just stat padding and benefit from being on a bad team and playing selfishly because his teammates were bad. It's the other way around. Bad teammates make it harder to do these monster hard carry performances. You're in worse scenarios. Your opponents have got more health than they do if it's Cold Zero's facing them. You haven't got people to entry and get the kill. You haven't got people to set it up. You haven't got people to close out rounds when you die. If you're the AWP and you don't have the AWP, you don't have the rifle to get you through those scenarios. Like, this is ridiculous, guys. That's the point of making this video. I mean, even that whole argument, if you remember back in the day, that like, oh, but Astralis slowed him down in their prime, right? Actually, Astralis is what also shows you how utterly bonkers Simple's carry performances were. So let's go 2018, opponents on LAN. Right, yeah, oh, what do you know? Astralis is one of the worst ones, right? They're all the way down here. When I say worst, he has a 1.19 rating against Astralis. Remember what I just showed you? That's the kind of rating for the whole year Electronic had, and you're all telling me he's easily top five. So he's easily a top five player, even against the best team of all time with Device, Dupree, Magus, all at the same time. Glaive fragging way better than he should. Zipnik's way better for a support player. Loads of clutches. And he's still got a 1.19, a 1.2 ratio and a plus 53. Then you go up, by the way, same year. Who else is he playing against this year? This is in 2018, remember? SK was still... Half decent. Look at the fucking kid. The death ratio of 1.54. He's stomping them. He's absolutely murking them. Gambit, obviously, he'd won the major the previous year. Didn't have Zeus anymore. Murks them. NIP's not totally appalling. Bonkers against them. Ence was on the way up. Like, this guy's nuts, mate. Cloud9, the one that won the major, and then with different players. Absolutely murking them. By the way, <laughs> four maps. Look at his kill to death ratio. It's two. You know how impossible that is. So, okay, you looked at Astralis. Yeah, it's not that good. Still amazing, by the way. Then you go the next year. Remember, Astralis won both the majors the next year and overcame the Blastralis period. And by the end of the year, were monsters and simple. The half, latter half of the year was using the Krieg under Blade's advice. So he must have been really bad in 2019. What's that? What's that? Astralis is all the way up here. He's getting a 1.30 rating against Astralis, who's still winning majors. What? Yeah, it's only three maps, but even so. And then Evil Geniuses became one of the best teams in the world. 1.49 killed to death, by the way. Furia, that was their rise that year, 1.21. G2, this is already when they're still a, a half-decent team. Remember, they made that Pro League final, which murking them, Kenny S, Shocks. Then you go to 2020, when at the early on in the year, he goes 1.83 over five maps against Astralis and 1.58. This is the real Astralis still, you know. This is bonkers stuff, guys. Then the G2 uh, with Kenny S when they were popping off. Still, there's obviously not many maps because it's only the first part of 2020. This is unbelievable stuff, guys. Like, if that's being contained, doesn't it show you how truly great he is? Isn't that like saying the Boston Celtics, like, contained Michael Jordan? But then you go and look at his numbers in the eye test. It's like, no wonder Larry Bird said he was God. Like, that actually just shows he's impossible to beat, right? So then you go and look at some of the other guys out there, right? How are they doing? How are their performances when they're playing in t teams that don't have either the stars at the same level or aren't number one in the world? Let's go have a look at a few. Let's go look at Cold Zero's career, right? So we all remember Cold Zero's career, but this is where you're all going to get your feelings hurt. Because look, you're all going to remember this tournament. Where is it? This one, Face It League Stage 3, because that's the first tournament when they had FNX and Taco came over from Gamers Academy and Zeus came over as the coach. And from that point on, which, by the way, that tournament, actually pretty pedestrian stats for Cold Zero. After that is when Cold Zero went mental, right? Look, and the next year, Luminosity eventually became number one, thanks in part to winning Columbus and then obviously winning ESL Season 3. And Cold Zero's having these monster numbers. Look at these monster performances. 1.3, 1.3, 1.41, 1.37. A bunch of 1.1s. By, by the way, notice he's still able to make high places, even though he does a 1.17. What would happen if Simple did that? That's when you say he was contained. Cold Zero, by the way, is having performances like this. 1.16. That's worse than Simple against Astralis, bro. 
So then you look up, okay, major low, 1.28, justifiably the MVP, he's having some amazing performances. You come in 2017, he's a fucking monster, still so consistent, so many carried performances. But you will remember that especially when you got into 2018, SK started to fall off, right? So you come here, E-League major with a stand-in, still pretty legit for having a stand-in, but then they don't do that well at Summit, they come like third, they start to drop off, this is when they bring in like Stewie, then later they bring in Tarek or whatever, like up here, so you start, oh actually Stewie would have been a bit more further up, but yeah, you bring him in, you start doing it, and what's that? Starting to go down a lot here, boys, what's going on here? Look, we had like a 1.02, 1.08, Guys, he's only just removed from his prime. 1.15. He has a couple of big performances again, but there's a 0 0.99 at E-League. What? What's going on? Some monster performances in smaller amount of maps. Increase the maps. Numbers go down again. Numbers are going down again. We're going up again. Oh, there's, there's one, the odd big one. It's just a blast with five maps. Then you're going, oh, monster. It's nine maps. Okay, not bad. This is when we're starting to get the not as good version. Look. We're getting the odd tournament, but then we're getting a lot of average and pedestrian performances here. Then we're against the Americas. That's the competition right back up to the prime. Then you go I am Sydney. Not that really stacked a tournament. Managed to farm people. And then back down to some average as fuck numbers. Now we're getting over, by the way, where now he's in phase. When he's in phase, he has some big performances at blasts. Aside from that, it's dropping down. Blasts are all big. Everything that's not a blast, dropping off a cliff, and it's not that great. Where's all the cold zero monster performances? This is it. He's even had a prime. So it's not even like he's warming up like simple year on year on year. Let's go to device, shall we? Let's go look at device's career on LAN. You go all the way back when he was just a wee Ben, just a young lad. Like these are like the odd really good performance, then an average or whatever performance. Then you come up 2015 is where he started to get really good. Yeah, now he's having like, but look how mixed it is. It goes like really good, average, bad, really good, average, average, good, 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 really good, good, average. Bad, we're talking about in terms of like the best players in the world here. Obviously, that's very good for normal players. Like, that would be an exceptional player for even someone like Twists would have a good... Res but we're talking about the greatest players in the world here. You come through, 2016 here, he's doing some hard cap performances, just some all right ones. Notice how many tournaments are 1.1, guys. Let's go back to simple again, shall we? So we're going back to simple, and we're going to his years, when he was on like... Let's just do with all time, so I can do the same thing. So let's go back to where Simple was, right? This is the beginning of his career, guys. Look how rarely there's a 1.1x. Look how rarely it's ever happening. This is only in 2016, and he's putting together these lands back to back. Oh, average as fuck. Mm, just out of normal for you. Still almost 1.2. Not that great still, Major. Going up. Look at how many of these in a row. These are impossible, guys. Remember, these ones are all before 2018. This isn't even when he's in his goat year. Then when he's in his goat year, forget about it. Just forget about it, mate. Just forget about it. Just forget about it. Look, this is impossible. No one will ever be able to fuck with this guy. You do know that, right? You do know simple as an alien. And the joke is, it should be Nico that we endlessly talk about as like this crazy mechanical prodigy that no one will ever fuck with. Or Zewu or Monacy. Simple makes them look like just extremely good players or just very good players. Or he makes it like he's clearly the best and then they're second. But they're the second clearly. When you're as good as these guys are, it should be like Messi and Ronaldo. It should just be you pick 1A, 1B. You pick which you prefer. You pick which factors you like. But I can make the argument for the other side. It's hard to make any arguments for anyone else, right? How do you do it, right? And then the other thing is this. Not only do they not hard carry like that Simple was supposed to with much worse teammates. Sometimes theirs are just like great teammates of old stars that have just gotten like one year worse. He had people who never became good, who were never top, top players or were washed for years by the time he got there, who had all these other weird problems, etc. So then you look at all those players. Look at their fall off, mate. Was it that easy to carry? Notice also how rarely, by the way, when they don't hard carry, that they're going deep in lands. And then you look when they do hard carry. Does it win them the tournament? Do they go to the final and perform well? Everyone's flaming simple if he goes to a major final or a big final and doesn't carry and loses the tournament. He either has to win or he has to lose and have an insane hard carry or he didn't play well. That's not even the standard we judged Cold Zero and Device and all these other guys by. Even now, like Kisarato hard carries the fuck out of Fury. And they don't even get close to the final beyond the major. They don't even get a sniff at winning a title. He's not like failing in the final and then everyone's like, well, you've great elsewhere, but what about the final? He, he's the guy who like carries in the match you lose and you go, wow, he's really good and he low held. 
Sipple was going to semis, finals. If he was in majors, even with dysfunctional teams, he was in quarters or better. He had an unbelievable run of playoff runs at, at majors. And the amount of times he's taken people to the finals who don't deserve to be there, or Electronics having an off game, or Flamey's just shit in the bed, or Zeus is on a weird one with the map vetoes. It didn't matter. He was just always getting there. Even when Zewu hard carries now, and as he's unbelievable performances, we've started to notice that in the big games, the big matches, the big tournaments, he has a drop-off. He doesn't do his all. His team doesn't go even close to as far as Simples did. Now, yes, we're comparing like relative to their era, but it's not like there's, listen, the level of CS in terms of like the top 20's risen, in terms of how good like the top five are to the rest of the top 10, it's not that ridiculous. It really isn't. Like you still have the three or four contenders that should win the tournament. You don't really have like the ninth best team is just going to pop off and the others aren't going to play bad, but then they're going to win the tournament. No, that just doesn't happen, guys. So these people have the big game letdowns. But you look at the, the letdowns of the Simples compared to Zero, Cold Zero when he's on a bad team, these other devices where he's on a not as great team. Simples now look way less frequent. They look way more forgivable. It just shows you how actually unbelievably underrated his hard carry phase was. Hey, it's simple. You're watching Torrent Channel. Shut the fuck up, you fucking bitch. The Beatles said they get by with a little help from their friends, but I get by with a little help from my Patreon community. And this video was kindly supported by Matt Pugnaccio Rakula, Ahmed Haju, Bot Pounder 420, Toucan Animosity, Tobias Bernasconi, Jensen Gore, Tosh, and a special thanks always goes out to my main man, Jerky's Minion. Would you like to ask me a question in my monthly video AMA? Do you want teasers to find out who are the upcoming guests? Maybe you want to take part in one of those lengthy but intense esports discussions I have with my donators or maybe you want to suggest a guest or a topic that I could cover well if any of those tickle your fancy put your money where your mouth is and join the Skrilluminati today where in the description box below there is a Patreon link